So the sanding is finally and officially finished. Thank God. So now I can start thinking about moving on to priming the walls. Uh, there's a couple preparations that I need to do first, one of which is thoroughly clean all of the dust out of here, as well as on the tongue and groove where I was sanding the drywall right beside it has collected on the tongue and groove as well. It doesn't look too bad. It seems to be just right there in that corner. Um, and, you know, sweep the entire floor, sweep the walls, sweep the ceiling. I want to get rid of all of the stuff that's out here that doesn't belong out here. All of the scrap drywall that I'm done with, the tools that I'm done with, all of it gone. I just want some more clear space in here. Also, if you go way back in my videos, um, when I had my insulation inspected, the inspector pointed out some little nooks and crannies, mostly up at the peak where the spray foam kind of pulled away from the wall. It's still insulated there technically, but there is some gaps. So I did get some uh, gap filler spray foam and we have ran into a couple spots on this wall already up at the top. However, upstairs, where the ceiling comes down to meet the little knee walls, there's a pretty big gap between the drywall and where the foam insulation ceiling goes, roof, I should say, goes back down behind it. So I'm also going to fill those areas with spray foam. Okay, it's looking real nice and clean up here. Loving it. Um, I did, use the shop vac on the walls and they're still a little dusty so I think I am gonna have to like either dry mop them or don't mind my nails <laughs> or maybe even use a very slightly damp rag to get all of the dust off I don't I don't really know um, and also this was the gap I was telling you about. This is where we already started filling it months ago. Um, and I'm just gonna go along here and fill the rest of it. We did go up along there as well. So I think that's what I'm gonna work on now. Okay, so after much debate, I've decided I am going to wipe the walls down. And I'm gonna use a Swiffer. This is actually one of the like the dry Swiffers, but I did dip it in water and wrung it out, so it's just just a hair damp. It it barely like this whatever this material is didn't really soak up the liquid anyway. So just gonna go real quickly over the walls with this, and um, should be good to go then. There's a lot of dust. I can see with this, you know, the sun coming in, um, a lot of dust is still on the walls. So this was probably a good choice. Um, I'm finding that I have to rinse this after every like eight feet, which isn't ideal, but well, good morning, guys. Today is Thursday, and it also happens to be New Year's Eve. So. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I know it's probably well past New Year's Eve by the time I get this uploaded and everything and you're watching it. So um, happy belated New Year's Eve. Um, I'm gonna get to work because today I'm going to start priming the walls and I'm very excited to say I'm finally to this point. Hopefully there will be no more mud and no more sanding for a very, very long time. This is also the step where I'm going to see just how well I did my mudding and sanding because, you know, it's deceiving when it's on the walls like it is now. And once there's some paint on it or primer, um, 
that's when all the imperfections will really show up. So fingers crossed that um, everything goes well. So let's get started. So the next week or so, I spent it priming the walls. I did use a primer especially for sealing mud and drywall, and it took me four gallons, which was kind of a surprise. But I am happy to say that that's now finished. Okay guys, so what you see me wrestling with here is actually roofing tar paper and um, I decided to go with this behind the tongue and groove for two reasons. One, as just an extra, you know, vapor barrier and also because it is black. And if my tongue and groove would ever separate a little bit, you won't see, you know, insulation behind it. It will be black. So here I'm just applying it to the angles of the roof which is kind of tricky as a one-person job, but I got it done. So it's been a few days and I had my dad come out yesterday to help me with this first board over here as well as on the other wall above the windows. Um, it takes at least two people to get that first board up to make sure it's level and now I'm planning on going up from there um, as far as I can go anyway. I already know it's going to be tricky because the angles of the ceiling come up at different spots and then it's level across the center. So where those angled parts meet the leveled part, I gotta make sure it all comes up at the same spot so that I have a level straight run on the flat part of the ceiling, which probably doesn't make any sense to you right now, but <laughs> it's, um, it's confusing. So. The plan for today is to get at least a couple boards up and I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned and I will put the guy's name on the screen, his channel. I have no idea who, who he is, but one video that is proven to be very helpful when it comes to hanging tongue and groove by yourself. 
So a lot of times with tongue and groove, you have to deal with some warpage on the boards. And, you know, if you're working with two people, it's not as big of a problem, but alone can be very annoying. So the solution that this gentleman had was to take a, you know, bar clamp and remove what would be this part here, which is secured on one end, and this is the end that, you know, moves. So you take this part off, and then, um, I don't know if all bar clamps have it, but all the ones that I've seen already have holes in them. So you just screw it to a scrap piece of two by four, and then on that two by four, attaching an L bracket. And then what it does is you screw your L bracket into the stud, or in my case, the rafter of your ceiling. And then this guy is just kind of swinging. Well, I can actually show you, hopefully my board doesn't fall down. So yeah, this guy's just kind of swinging here. And when you get your board up and you have this gap, put this guy on and tighten it down. In my case, I'm just gonna tighten it enough that it's holding it because if I tighten it too much, then the end down there is gonna pop out. So I'm just gonna kinda hold it in place for now. And then I'll go down to this end and I can use my other jig to attach here to clamp this end down or if I can just get this end in snug, nail it, and then go down, tighten, tighten that, and nail it down there. I think I am gonna use both jigs on this particular board because it is pretty warped. Um, so, you know, there's still a little gap there. It's not too bad. It's probably about um, an eighth of an inch, maybe. Okay, so I know you didn't get to see much of that being back there, but I got it down perfectly tight the whole way across. And it just makes things so much easier. Now, I just moved them up a hair um, with, you know, six inch boards. I could probably do two rows and then move it. Um, I'm just not used to like the the spacing yet um, and if you had the longer uh, clamps you could move it even less but you know that's not a big deal so I have them moved up and now I'm gonna continue on
So for the record, um, I did not <laughs> enjoy ripping out so much of that insulation. Um, it just was sticking down below the joists and it was, you know, preventing the, the tongue and groove from lying flat. Um, the guys that did the insulation did not do a very good job of like scraping it back for me. So I've had to do this so many times. And just to think that um, I'm gonna have to do this three more times, plus whatever else I find along the way. So yeah, now I'm gonna <laughs> go back to seeing if that last board for this side will fit. Fingers crossed. I hope it really was that easy. Oh my god, that whole time fighting with that damn board for 10 minutes. And it was because of the insulation. Devin. <sighs> okay, friends. <laughs> this side is done. I am to where the roof starts to go level across. So that is where I'm going to stop. This is the point where I have to make sure... Let me see if I can explain that. So exactly right here is where it starts going um, flat. And same with over there. So I have to make sure that whatever board starts there that continues the whole way is a full piece and that it is level. So from here to here, I have to make sure that that comes out to be an exact full piece going this way. So to do that, I'm going to have to measure the distance of however many boards um, and do the math for this section. And this first board here will probably be cut. So that way, you know, it can be half board, whole board, whole board, whole board, <laughs> whole board, and then continuing. You know what I'm saying? So there's going to be trim at both of these angles here. So, you know, it'll work out. Um, maybe I'll be lucky enough that this will just continue being full pieces and then full pieces across here. We'll see how it works out. But that's where I'm going to stop on this side. I am going to continue over to this one now that I have a good flow going. Um, but I am going to leave you guys here for now. And I'll probably end this video here as well. I have no idea how long it is. Um, it's been several weeks for me. So I'm sure it's getting pretty long. And um, yeah. I am planning on starting the shower tile soon. Maybe that will be the first thing that happens in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And yeah, I'm just trying to fill in because a lot of this I won't be able to do by myself. So when I am stuck with not having a job that I can do by myself, I want other stuff to fill in, which is why I'm going to start the shower tile. Also, once the shower tile is done, then I can start the floor in the bathroom as well. So, things are moving quickly now. Well, <laughs> quick, quicklier, <laughs> more quickly. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I'm in here by summer, by my birthday, which is in June. That is my goal. Um, say a prayer for me. Thank you guys for your continued support. I really appreciate it. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. It actually does help my channel, which I am trying to grow. So again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.